Hey, good evening, everybody. Happy Saturday evening. You guys, hey, Sebastian. Hello. I am about, I just wanted to pop in and say hello real quick. I'm about to go get back on my uh, ClickFunnels training. You are in excellent hands with Sebastian and Tammy is going to be facilitating for you guys tonight. So you guys have a great class and I will see y'all soon. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. How are you doing tonight? All right. How are you, Sebastian? That's good. Give me just a moment. I was just doing a little bit of uh, house cleaning here. I uh, made a slight change to the document we're going to use. So I wanted to include something else that everyone had been asking for. Um, Go. So get this out of there. Right. What I'm going to do. So that's not what I needed. Share this screen with you guys. There we go. All right, can everyone see that? Yes, I am. Yes. Okay, good. Because I um. Yes, sir. See, now I've got my participants. Up the chat for any questions. So welcome to the Notary Nerds, Notary Basics, or Notary Fundamentals. Um, <clears throat> this course is generally for anyone who's very new to the notary world. Um, and this class is actually evolving a bit. Uh, we did this course once before, and we like the content, but we're going to change it up a little bit. Um, it's actually going to continue to change and kind of morph into something that's a little bit uh, um, uh, just a little bit different than what it started out as, and, it, and that was just based on feedback that I got um, stating that they were, the content that was needed uh, was a little bit different. So, But generally, it, this is the same course that we've had before, so there's nothing that's changed, not a whole lot that's changed yet. Um, but this uh, course is really... new to being a notary public uh, that really hasn't gotten out there and, and done uh, pretty much anything. Um, so we are going to go through some of the basics. And then uh, and then a, a new thing that I added was the acknowledgments and jurats, if, if you aren't aware of what that's, uh, what those entail. So who this is for is, is anyone, this is generally, the way I started this is to is for anyone who's interested in becoming a notary public, anyone who's been recently commissioned, or anyone who wants a, a, basically a starting point or a refresher. Um, we'll welcome everybody. And just be aware that this is not specific to any one state. Uh, just be aware I am in Texas, so that's my general frame of reference. Please, please, please do your research and be sure that uh, whatever you're doing is right for your state. I know every state is a little bit different in how they lay out things or how they want things. Um, California is one of those states that's real picky about the wording in their notarial certificates. Um, so just be aware of that and, and do the research for your state so that way you have the correct documentation and you're doing the correct process. Um, again, this is based on uh, personal observations and uh, research that I've done. So please do your research. And be sure that the processes that you're putting in place and the documents you're using are, are those that are right for your state. So what is a notary public? A notary public is a publicly commissioned ministerial official of integrity appointed by a governing body. It is a commissioned um, 
a commissioned position. It's not a license. They don't issue you a license like a driver's license. They issue you a commission, which basically means you are, uh, I, I want to say a ward of the state, but I don't think that's the correct term. Um, you're, you're kind of like an employee of the state. You, you, do a, you complete a service for the state, um, which means you're held to certain uh, you're held to certain rules in order to complete that. And also, um, as an official of the state, you're held to a certain standard about the things that happen. Um, most states do require that if you are a notary and anyone does ask you uh, to notarize a document, if it, as long as it's not unreasonable, you do have to notarize that document. Um, now, everyone is a little different, of course, on how they choose to, to determine that. Uh, but be aware that the state does require you, generally most states require you, if you are a notary and someone asks, you are supposed to complete that notarization. Um, of, and every situation is different. So one of the important things as notarial officials, as representatives of the state, we certify the proper execution of many life-changing documents of private citizens, uh, which can change a lot of things, grant powers of attorney, convey real estate, um, and a multitude of other activities. So our position as notaries is very important uh, and is not to be taken lightly. Um, it, it's definitely a great way to make some money, but understand that there is a major importance to being a notary um, and keep that with you at all times. So what a notary is not, a notary is typically not an attorney, um, a judge or a high ranking official. Although some of those officials do actually have uh, powers of a notary, they they it comes with the it comes with the job, so to speak. Uh, but they are not notaries themselves. So typically, they they can notarize a document if necessary. But uh, those those individuals are probably going to tell you to go get a notary because it's not necessarily their job, even though they have the rights and responsibilities of, of a notary. Um, and as a, a notary's do, as a notary's duty um, is to screen signers of important documents for their true identity and their willingness to sign. We want to be sure that um, when you when you are a notary and your a signer comes to you and they want something notarized, you want to be sure that they're in the right state of mind. They're not influenced by any drugs or alcohol or any other thing, uh, especially other people. You you want to be sure that they're competent, that they know what they under know and understand what they're signing, and also that they're not under duress. They're not being forced to sign something. If they are in, in any of those situations, it's your right and or duty to say no um, <clears throat> to that transaction because that could it could potentially be an illegal transaction in the long run. Um, and so as a notary, you have to make that determination at that time. Um, some people may or may not want to be a notary. It really depends on what you want to do, what you want to get out of this. Uh, for me and my personal observation, most notaries are people who like helping other people or other individuals. Um, somebody who, uh, also somebody who wants to have their own schedule or build their own business, uh, note that can be great for a notary or somebody who just really wants to learn a new skill. Any questions so far? No? Okay. No, nope, none so far. All right. So how do you become a notary? There's many different ways and I'm going to kind of um, shrink this down a little bit, but generally <clears throat> in order to become a notary, uh, you do have to um, uh, oh, I skipped that whole thing. Uh, in order to become a notary, you do have to go to your secretary or state or the governing body of your state or county and request an application. Generally, you can get those online um, and some, or sometimes by mail. You would fill out that application, submit any uh, additional paperwork that is required, submit any uh, fees that are required. Um, and also they may ask you to get a bond. Um, they may ask you to get uh, E and O insurance, which may or may not happen in every state. Um, I know with Texas, we do require a $10,000 bond. I know that some bonds can be as low as $500 and some can be as high as $25,000 uh, for the bond. So it really just depends on your state. You would have to do the research to find out what's required in your state. Um, <clears throat> and once you do become a notary, um, there are certain requirements of the job. 
So as an owner, we have to be impartial witnesses to a signing of a set of documents. So we're the ones that basically watch the person sign. Uh, we, we are the ones that uh, identify the signer uh, using their ID credentials, whether that be a driver's license, a state ID, um, it could be um, a, a passport, it could be a, a number of things um, that your state would determine is key or valuable into identifying that person. And those documents could either be a single page, uh, one single page where they sign at the bottom or whatnot, and then you notarize it on the same page or the next page, or it could be a big stack of loan documents, you know, 300 pages thick or whatnot. Um, and you may have multiple notarizations within that. Either way, there is a specific order in which we're, we're supposed to do that. Uh, and we're supposed to notarize everything. First, we want to review the documents to be sure that they're actually complete. Um, we don't want to notarize a document that's missing some pages um, or that it has blanks in it. Um, if you're missing a blank that can be filled in later, that could come back on you and the signers and you could be held liable for any damages that are uh, that are received from that. So you always wanna be sure that you have a full and complete set of documents and everything is filled out properly. You don't have to worry about whether it's um, what the document uh, says or if it's legal or right or anything like that. What, what you're trying to determine is that it is completely filled out and, and finalized. No matter what it says in the middle, that doesn't matter to us because it's not our job since we're not attorneys to determine whether it's legal or right or anything else. We just have to determine whether it's complete or not. Of course, you then would want to identify all of your signers. So if you have five or six people coming up and only one person signing, you need to identify them and then verify their identity with their ID credentials. Again, whether that be their driver's license, their state ID, their passport, uh, or whatever is allowed in your state. <clears throat> At that point, once you've done that, you want to document all the details of that notarization in your notary logbook. It's really important to do it early because you want to have all those documents, uh, uh, all that documentation down before you finalize everything. Because as soon as you stamp it and say, here you go, that person is probably going to try and walk away or run off and go do whatever else they, they have to do for the day. They're not worried about sticking around. Most people generally see, oh, you signed, you stamped, I'm good. And that's not always the case. There's stuff that we have to do as notaries. So it's uh, best practice to get that, all that documentation, all the, um, everything that you need into your journal right then and there, who the signers were, where you met, what the document was and whatnot. That is if you keep a journal and it also if your state requires a journal. If your state does not require a journal, then you by all means don't have to. But it is the best practice to have it just in case something comes back, then you have proof to say, hey, this is what happened. Um, depending on whether the document it is uh, requiring a, an acknowledgement or a jurat, you may have to sub, uh, you may have to administer an oath if it's the jurat. Um, the jurat is basically the signers attesting to the truthfulness of the document and attesting to the fact that they're willing to sign the document. Uh, we'll go over that in just a minute. Once you've administered your oath, you've signed the document, filled out your, uh, your notarial certificate and stamped, um, then that's pretty much the end of the, the, end of the notarization ceremony. Um, and we do consider it a ceremony because there is, there is a process to it. it. There is something that has to happen, uh, especially when it comes to administering that oath. Okay, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so, what are some of the tools you would use as a notary? Some of those tools would uh, be included would include your stamp, um, your logbook, um, any technology you would use like a phone or a laptop, a printer, a scanner, um, any online or um, electronic uh, uh, tools such as email, um, document portals, instant messaging anything like that. All those are considered tools of the trade. Um, so you need to be sure that when you do have those or when you use those that they are secure, uh, they need to be in your possession and no one else should have access to those. Um, and some states do actually require that you provide um, notorial uh, records of notorial acts here in Texas. Uh, anyone can ask for 
the copy of a, a copy of a notarial record and we do legally have to give it up but um, they do have to follow a specific procedure they have to know the specific some specific details about that notarial act uh, we do have to notarize a document saying that they requested it and they do have to pay 50 cents per notarial record so there is some some uh, kind of um, safety nets in there for us so that way we're not just releasing information out to the public but in texas it is considered our notarial journal is considered a public document um, so anyone can ask for that information another reason to keep your journal is if you ever have to testify in court um, if they bring you to court and say hey what happened on this day with this particular uh, notarization you can go back to your journal and say hey this is this is who i met this is who signed the document. These are the documents they signed. It was an acknowledgement or a jurat. You have uh, proof of what happened there. Um, and especially if you take any notes as to what was going on, um, whether the kids were in the background or the dog was barking at you, or maybe the signer had to go and um, pull a second ID because the first one wasn't, wasn't correct or was expired. Um, what, whatever the case may be, all the details of everything that happened should be in your notary journal. Any questions so far? No. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So a lot of people. Go ahead. Okay. So, so a lot of people... everybody, let's just, I, I forgot to say at the beginning, uh, let's just raise our hands uh, for questions or put it in the chat. I am monitoring for both. We Thank do have so a lot of people on this call. Thank you so much. Um, so a lot of people, when they start the process, they always wonder how long does it take to get commissioned? Um, when you review all the information that's out there, depending on what state, typically, if you go by what they say, it can take anywhere from seven to nine weeks, um, but it may be as short as four. It really depends on your state. Uh, it depends on when you applied. Was it on a holiday or a weekend? How many people are working? Um, the speed at which that process is, uh, that application is processed. Um, and if you have all of your documentation and your fees in order, if they're not, if you don't have everything ready for them, it's going to take them much longer. I've heard of uh, people getting their commission back within a week and a half, two weeks. Um, typically, I've heard about four weeks, but it can take longer, depend just depending on the conditions of of the application itself. <clears throat> okay. And then another question that a lot of people ask, how long does the commission last? So there's three answers that I found. Typically, it's a four-year commission, but I've also heard a five-year and 10-year commission, depending on the particular state. And it can range anywhere from a few, uh, just under $100 to uh, several hundred dollars. Um, I know here in Texas, it's only $21 to get a commission, and pretty much anyone can apply. Um, <clears throat> but that's particularly Texas. I don't know about the other states, but it can range in price. So you just have to research into your secretary of state or your governing body to find out what that, what that cost will be. All right. A lot of people also wonder what will I, what can I notarize or what can't I notarize? To be honest, you can notarize pretty much anything. There are a few limitations um, that are pretty universal between all the states. But if you look at this list, um, there's a ton of stuff that can be notarized. All the things that I've highlighted in red are the documents that I've typically seen the most or have heard of the most, uh, such as real estate documents or loan closings, uh, vehicle title transfer, a proof of residency, maybe for a school, so that way somebody can go, um, go, to, go to a particular school, your dur durable power of attorney or advanced medical directives, living wills or living trusts and uh, wills, also your promissory notes. Um, and of course, the typical uh, notary certificates, your acknowledgments, your jurats, affirmations, and affidavits. Um, but this is just a short list. There's, there is a ton of stuff out there that you can notarize. Uh, anyone, pretty much anyone can write down anything. A child could write down that they love chocolate cake and sign it, and you can notarize that. Um, so it, it, the document itself, there's no, almost no limit as to what you can notarize. Speaking of limits, what can't be notarized? 
So typically speaking, any document that contains missing pages or blank fields, as we stated earlier, it needs to be complete uh, a complete document. So if you have a five page document and you can tell, you know, that it was supposed to be a five page document, you know, you one of two or one of five, two of five, three of five, and you're missing page four, you cannot notarize that document. If it's incomplete, there, there's no way around that. Uh, also, if there's any blanks, if they didn't finish filling in any of those blanks, they need to uh, complete those blanks. An important thing to remember as non attorney notaries, we cannot tell them what to put in those blank fields because that would be considered legal advice. So what you can tell them is that this document needs to be completed. These fields cannot be left blank. You must enter something. If it is <clears throat> not applicable, then you must state so, um, or you can put something else in, but you need to fill in those blanks. Um, <clears throat> another thing that we cannot notarize is a photocopy. If it's not an original, with their original signature on the page, we cannot we cannot notarize that. Now you can notarize some documents as a, a, there's a copy certificate where you can notarize the fact that this is a true copy or a certified copy. But typically, when that happens, the notary is the one making that copy um, because you would have to if you just took their word on it, you would literally have to go back through the document and be sure that every word, every line, every quotation mark, every little detail is exactly the same. So that's why we can't just let them bring a copy to us. We have to have an original. Um, <clears throat> another thing uh, that we cannot notarize, if the document doesn't have a notarial certificate attached to it, um, we can no we can still notarize it, but the signer has to choose which notarial certificate to uh, to use. We can tell them what what's available, um, and they have to make that choice. If they're not sure uh, or they don't know, then the best best practice is to have them reach out to the person who either created the document or the person receiving the document, because they will be the ones to they would be the ones to determine what type of notarial certificate is necessary. As a as a signer, sometimes they can't can't or won't, and as notaries, we're not allowed to. Otherwise, that's considered um, legal advice. Okay. Um, again, some other documents, publicly recorded documents such as birth certificate, marriage certificate, or death certificate. Um, again, we can we do have the option of making a copy of that and certifying a copy, but we cannot notarize the actual certificate if it is a public record. Um, and the same thing with photographs. We can make a copy of a photograph and notarize that the copy is a true copy, but we cannot notarize a photograph. Another thing a lot of people don't uh, realize is that the name, if a name doesn't match, um, if you have John, John Williams <clears throat> or, or Bill Williams on a document, but his ID states William uh, or uh, Jonathan Williams or uh, William Jones, whatever it is, if those don't match, that's kind of a judgment call for you because you have to identify that the person signing it uh, does that they do the, it's the same identity as the person who's presenting that document to be signed. Um, so that's really a judgment call. Um, be careful with that uh, and just just watch who what the what the document says. If a document has a middle initial, but it's not on their ID, you would probably also need to ask them for an additional uh, additional identification that actually has either their middle name or their or their uh, middle initial. And even then, when you're looking at the middle initial, if it's a uh, if it's just the middle initial and the, they don't match, there's kind of a question there because that middle initial may stand for anything uh, or any different name. So if the name is written out on the document, um, all, all full the full three names are written out on the document, but the ID states a first first name, a middle initial, and a last name. Can you be certain that that middle initial actually goes with that middle name? There's there's really no way to find out without getting another another uh, another type of ID. Okay. So when should you refuse to notarize a document? So you have a customer, 
or a person that has brought you a document and you're kind of wondering whether you should notarize it or not. Um, <clears throat> one, if it's not legally allowed to be notarized in your state or county, then that's something to take in, into uh, mind. Again, birth certificate, death, death certificate, or any public record, you would obviously be able, have to tell them no. Um, if the signer or their representative is not physically in front of you, if they aren't, aren't in front of you ready to sign, there's no way you can notarize a document. Um, that does change with an acknowledgement, but, but that's a specific case. Um, <clears throat> and also, if the signer cannot be positively identified, either with their, if they don't have satisfactory identification or there's no personal knowledge with a uh, uh, credible witness, then you also have to, you would have to deny them because we can't identify that person. Um, we cannot uh, notarize a document that is post-dated um, or, or if a certificate has been predated. So if you get a certificate and they've already put in the information for you, that's going to be a big no. That's something that only the notary should be filling in and they, we should be doing that at the time of notarization, not beforehand. <clears throat> and then as you talk to your, as you talk to your signers, you, you have to have that conversation and, and get that feel for them to understand if they're in the right state of mind. Have they been drinking? Uh, does it feel like they might be under the influence of drugs? Does it feel like they're nervous or that they're maybe they're unwilling to sign? You have to kind of feel that out. And if any of those pop up, that would that would definitely be a case where I would definitely tell them, no, I can't I can't do this for you. Maybe come back tomorrow uh, after you, you know, you've dried out or whatnot. Um, or maybe uh, if the circumstances were different, we could do it at a, a different day or time. Uh, but again, that is a definite judgment call on you as the notary uh, to make that determination at that time. And then, of course, if it's an unreasonable request, if it's two o'clock in the morning and somebody's calling you on your phone and you're dead asleep, that's that's an unreasonable request. I, I'm not going to get up and go notarize a document for you, especially when I, if I have not marketed myself for that. Now, if you've marketed yourself to be up 24-7, then somebody gives you a call, that's not an unreasonable request. So as, as you can see, that, that can kind of go both ways. So to go over some of those common notorial acts that we perform, we have not acknowledgments, jurats, and oaths and affirmations. We also have proof, acknowledge, uh, proof of acknowledgement, uh, certified copies, depositions, protests, and witness. Uh, we can witness op the opening of safety deposit boxes. But the ones you'll hear the most are the acknowledgement and the jurat, and then the oath and affirmation. So acknowledgement is just a formal declaration by somebody who appears before a notary public stating that they are signing the document for its stated purpose. A jurat is where the, per the person has physically appeared and they are taking an oath stating the truthfulness of the document and their willingness to sign the document in the notary's presence. An acknowledgement can actually be signed beforehand or an acknowledged document can be signed before coming to the notary. What we're determining is that the person who signed the document, we've identified that person and the signature matches what's on their ID. With a jurat, they cannot sign until they actually are in front of the notary and they must, uh, uh, we identify them, they do take the oath and then they can sign the document uh, before we can notarize it. And then the oath and affirmation are those, are those two particular um, things that we would give them on, an, on a jurat. So the difference between an oath and an affirmation, an oath is swearing to God, an affirmation is affirming on, per, on their own personal honor. Um, so it, it's legally the, same, legally the same thing, just said two different ways. Any questions? No? Okay. I think um, there may have been, Celestine, did you have a question from earlier? I have a question too. Okay. Uh, at first, I saw Celestine, then I saw Sylvia, and then Adriana. So the floor is open for any questions. Yeah. Okay. Um, I had just I just needed to be patient. He already um, answered it um, within the next slide, so I am okay. Thank okay. you. Thank awesome. you, Sylvia. Did you have a question?
No, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Okay. Adriana, you're next. Hello. Okay, you, you mentioned that um, the signer to swear, but can you hear me? Hello, yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, you had said that it's an oath to swear before God. What if they say they're an atheist? That would mean they need to uh, take an affirmation. Okay. Thank you. That, and that's, that's the difference. So uh, an oath is swearing to God. Um, and then an affirmation is swearing on their own personal honor. So if they choose, they say they don't want to swear to God, that's quite all fine. We're just going to do the affirmation. Um, and that's a simple process is do you affirm uh, on your own personal honor under the penalty of perjury that the, all the all the information in this document is true and correct to the best of your knowledge and you are signing of your own free will. And it, it's exactly the same. So it's the, the, the difference is just up to the signer. All right, the next question, Jeanette. Hello, everybody. Hello, Bastian. All right, thank you. Um, so my question was, if you have, um, let's per se, you have a signing um, with a POA and a, the attorney there, uh, the purchase's attorney is the POA, um, is it necessary to do a jurat if they have the POA as proof already? Only, only... You would only do a jurat if it's required per the documentation. It's not up to us to determine who's going to, uh, whether it's going to be an acknowledgement or a jurat, whether it's a POA or not. Um, the the notarial certificate that's included in that will determine that. Um, okay. So that should be included in the, in your documentation. Thank you. You're welcome. And if you do have a question about it, if you're um, if you're wondering whether it's required or not, reach out to the person who gave you the document um, and ask them because the, ultimately, again, it's either the person who created the document or the person that's receiving the document that has to determine what type of notarization they want. So if acknowledgement works for them that just acknowledges that I saw you sign, then that's mm -hmm. great. But if you if they want somebody to say, hey, I swear that everything in here is true and I'm signing willingly, then they would need a juror at. But again, that's, that's actually that's not yeah, our that's original. actually I'm gonna I'm gonna actually ask that ask that because I actually brought up the uh, the you know I said well you know am I gonna see a POA because if, if it's a POA and I need to see the document and the proof of that and yeah. they would you know she was like oh that that's that's a good point let me just call and make sure so I was like okay um, yeah. but thank you. So yeah, if you if you ever have a question about any of your documentation, reach out to the person who gave it to you and ask them because they need to clarify that. That's not our job to clarify. We just right. we just need understanding of what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Sebastian. You're welcome. So on this screen, um, again, I'm Texas based, so this is these are Texas acknowledgement and jurat. But it says uh, the acknowledgement is when the notary has verified the signer's identity and the signer has willingly signed the document. All we're doing is just verifying that Johnny Q signer has signed this document and that the, we're, we've identified him and the signature matches. Um, whether he signs beforehand or, or signs at the, at the time of notarization on an acknowledgement doesn't really matter. Um, he, they can sign beforehand or they can sign uh, in front of us with an acknowledgement only. Whereas with a jurat, they do have to wait until they're in front of the notary to sign. I've actually had a case where a gentleman brought me a document. He had completely filled it out, signed everything three, day, uh, three days before uh, I had met with him and he wanted me to notarize it and I had to tell him no uh, because everything had already been signed. So my, um, my, uh, all of my certificates would have been dated completely different from when he had it. But he also didn't understand the process of being uh, a notarization. He was just told you need to get this notarized. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of people are just told that you just take this document and be sure to get it notarized, but they don't explain what a nobody knows what a not many people know what a notarization process is. So you do have to kind of educate your signers about it so they understand. Okay. Um, and then again, here's the jurat. And the, again, the jurat's where you've identified the signer. They've taken the oath or affirmation. 
uh, and sworn to the truthfulness of the document before they sign. So I was trying to get this filled out for you guys. So can you see that, Tammy, everybody? Yes. Okay, so this is one that I've uh, kind of filled out. Um, I don't know how well that's that's coming across. I tried to make it as big as possible, um, and I wasn't able to finish the JIRAC before we started class. Uh, but this is kind of how it's filled out. Of course, you have your venue at the top where it says state of and county of. Um, and then the next portion is before me. Uh, I am the I am the notary, so Sebastian Lopez, notary public. Uh, a lot of people miss that that part where it says uh, that common notary public. That's usually required um, required in there to identify yourself as the notary public. Um, and then the name of the signer, which we have John Q. Signer here. Sebastian, I identified. Say again. Sebastian, I'm sorry. Can you increase it? Uh, the font is kind of small. Okay. Is that possible? Let me see. Not what I wanted. No, it's not letting me, unfortunately. Let's see. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not letting me. Okay, well, we tried. I tried. I, I'll send, I can send this out so you guys can see it as well. Uh, or I can post it in the group um, somewhere. But um, <clears throat> let's see. Hold on one second. Let me try and pull this up for you. All right, is that a little bit better? Perfect. Okay. So again, um, this is a certificate of acknowledgement. Right here we have the venue, which is where your feet are planted at the time of notarization. We're in the state of Texas. I'm in the county of Dallas. Uh, before me, the notary public, my name and my title as notary public, personally appeared John Q. Signer. So whatever his name is, however it is on the identification is what you're going to put here. It should also be in the document, uh, but that can vary from document to document how everything is signed. Um, <clears throat> if we do have a credible witness, um, I kind of I kind of forgot to check to mark this, but if you do have a credible witness, then their name would go here. So Mary A. Witness, um, you would put their uh, name there and also include them in your notarial journal. And then you would have the check mark here to prove to me on oath of. Typically, it's going to be one of these three. It's not going to be multiples of. Either known to me or proved to me uh, by this credible witness or their pro proof through me through their type of their driver's license or their um, passport, whatever document you're using. Typically, passports are for um, uh, uh, real estate transactions. I'm sorry. Um, and then uh, they prove to be the person whose name is subscribed to the foregoing instrument, acknowledge that she executed for the same purpose. And then, of course, you would have your date, your signature down here. And the nice thing about these particular ones, you have this optional section where you put the title or type of document. So we put the test document. This particular document was dated on 14th of February uh, 2019, but when did I notarize it? 1st of April 2020. Another question about documents, um, the document date, the when it was created, it can be any time before the notarization or on the day of notarization, but it cannot be after the notarization. So this one was created in on the 14th of February in 2019, and then it didn't get notarized until April of 2020, which is absolutely fine. Now, if those dates were switched, then, um, or the 
date was, let's say the document date was February 14th, but I was supposed, I notarized it on the 12th of February, 2019, that that's an illegal, um, incorrect and illegal uh, notarization. So that wouldn't be allowed. Um, and then down here, your total number of pages. So we just said four. And then also, if you have any additional signers, you know, if, if um, you know, he, uh, John had a wife and her name was Sue, then you would, you could put it down here. Or you could actually, if you're, if you have space, you could include it up here. It really just depends on, on how you have your acknowledgement set up for your state or how they want it. Um, everyone's a little bit different. Again, I know California, this would not be compliant for California. It's missing some, uh, some key elements here. Uh, that that states some specific things, um, and then also I know I uh, believe Arkansas has a different um, a different way that they they word this uh, section here about how they name the signer, um, but it's typically typically the the same the same information is what's going to happen on every you know most uh, notarial certificates. It's going to be the same or similar information, just how it's worded may be a little bit different. All right. And unfortunately, again, I don't have a jurat to um, see. So uh, I, unfortunately, I don't have a jurat that's filled out, but I will have one filled out and post it somewhere for you guys. But it's pretty much the same. Um, <clears throat> of course, when you're looking at a jurat, it does say subscribed and sworn to or affirmed, which does tell you uh, if you see this, these words subscribed and sworn or affirmed, you know that you're, you, have, you have a jurat. Um, and sometimes included in, uh, it is sometimes included um, in the doc, in the, in the notarial certificate, they'll put it acknowledged, subscribed and sworn. They'll mix, they'll mix both. So when you look at those, you, when you look at your notarial certificate, read through it carefully and be sure that you choose the right notarial certificate, uh, for the purpose, um, or that the notarial certificate matches what you're doing. So you want to know that they are the same, because if you do miss that, um, oath or affirmation and they ask you about it later, that can come back on you. Um, that's one reason why it's uh, in good to record that information that you did give an oath or an affirmation at the time of notarization. Thank you, Tony, for that information. That's actually uh, uh, a good spot to go through, go to for um, for the certificates. Um, here, this one uh, has some extra information. It has room for two additional signers. And of course, your signature would go there and another spot for any additional information. Of course, your stamp would go here. And then down here again, the same information, the title or type of document when it was uh, when the document was created or written, the no total number of pages and any additional signers on that document. Of course, with this uh, as a jurat, you are going to give that author affirmation um, to ask them if they are if the document is true and correct to the best of their knowledge and if they're signing of their own free will. All right. So, all right, let me switch back over. Screen. Share. Get rid of this. Um, a total number of documents should include the certificate page, correct? You can if you want to. I personally don't. I've, I've never included that. Um, that's just my personal take. Um, <clears throat> it, it, it's more just a way, uh, writing, writing that information down is just a, a better way of tracking. So that way, if somebody comes up with that notarial certificate, since it is a loose leaf certificate, and they're like, and they show up with a document that says, you know, test document, and they only show up with two pages, but you have it written down that it's supposed to be four or five pages, then they know they're missing a couple of pages. Um, it's just a way, it's just an extra security feature there for us as notaries. Um, so if you want to include the cert notarial certificate, you can. Um, you, you may just want to identify that you're 
uh, you're including that in that page count, I guess, but it's really up to you. All right, so the five steps to a proper notarization. Um, have we gone through this before? No? no. Um, unfortunately, I don't have another copy of this that I can make bigger. Uh, but you can find this from the from the NNA. Um, it goes through similar similar steps to what we did earlier. Um, you require their actual personal physical presence, their appearance in front of you. Then you look over the document and be sure that the document is complete and uh, completely filled out. The third step is you want to um, <clears throat> verify your, the identity of the document uh, of the signer to the uh, so that way they can notarize the document. Um, and be sure that the right person is standing in front of you and that they legally can sign. Um, then, of course, number four, you want to record all that information and be sure you have your notarial uh, logbook ready to go. Everything's filled out. You've recorded who's going to, uh, what you're notarizing, who's going to sign, um, what type of notarization it is, uh, the date of the document and whatnot. And then, of course, at the end, you would complete the actual ceremony. Uh, swear, give them an oath or affirmation if necessary, um, and then sign and stamp that document and fill out that notarial certificate and let them go about their business. So I'm going to skip through these next few because that's a long way of saying what I just said in about two minutes. Um, one thing I do want to mention When, uh, when you're looking at, uh, when you are completing a notarization, um, especially if you're administering an oath or affirmation, there should be a ceremony to it. There should be a, a verbal response and um, so, some sort of ceremony of raising the hand or whatnot, because it is, they really are swearing, just like they would in any courtroom, uh, the truthfulness uh, and completeness of the document. Um, so if something were to come back and they say, oh, I never took that. Well, if we can prove that they did, they're, they're being held to that. Uh, that's, that's, part of our, uh, that's part of the reason why we, we do that, that they're swearing that that document is correct and true um, to their knowledge. So you need to be, be very ceremonial in it. Um, you need to have a verbal response of some sort. And it, a verbal response isn't a, hmm, or you know, say, I do or I will, or uh, I understand something um, like a, a short sentence or a couple of words that shows that they give you a, a actual response. Um, <clears throat> that's very important. And then what if you have multiple notarizations? Well, if you have multiple notarizations, it's basically the same process just over and over again. Um, I know some states um, may be different, but I know here in Texas, every time you had, uh, every time you have a jurat, you are supposed to administer an oath. How you apply that is completely up to you and your business, um, but you, it, is, it is what is expected as per the state. Um, that every time the jurat comes up, whether it's whether you're sitting down at uh, on a, at a table signing for loan documents and you've got 200 pages and, and six of those notarizations are jurats, you're supposed to administer the oath every time. Um, or whether it just be the one one time for whatever that document is. Um, another thing, <clears throat> um, you may also be required to get uh, a thumbprint in order to identify um, the signer. Uh, I know it's required in California. Uh, I know here in Texas we're prohibited from that. Um, we're, we're not allowed to get any kind of uh, biological or bio, biometric information from the signer. Um, so every state is different. Please research your own state and be sure that you know what you can and can't do uh, or what you are supposed to do or not supposed to do concerning that. A lot of people have questions about what do I get? What printer should I get? What computer should I get? Uh, what scanner should I get? Where should I go for this or that? Um, <clears throat> when it comes down to it, the technology that we use is pretty simple. You have to have a computer. You generally have to have a computer of some sort. You have to have a printer of some sort. You probably should have a scanner of some sort, but you don't have to. Um, a mobile phone, most currently most smartphones will work in this industry. Um, <clears throat> what it comes down to 
uh, as far as what to get is what can you afford? What is your budget? If you can only afford $300 for a laptop, then find a laptop that's that you can afford in that $300 price range. Um, there are a few things you want to stay away from, um, and that's something we'll, we can go over in a different uh, different course. Or uh, if you look through the notary groups, you'll find plenty of examples of that, of what, uh, what you should probably stay away from. But um, you go with what you can afford. Don't, don't try and, you know, shoot for the the top of the line best of the best because to be to be honest it's not quite necessary to get the best of the best all the time and you can always always upgrade like i said when you're cooking you can always uh, add more salt but you can't take it away so the same thing with the technology that you use um, <clears throat> sometimes you may need an embosser depending on what is required um, and that's something you would just have to look at uh, as far as uh, what what they're looking for in that notarization. Um, it's always a good idea to have some notarial certificates, some of those loose leaf certificates on hand just in case. Um, and also a no, uh, notary um, resource book. If you look on the NNA, they have a great resource uh, for most of the states. It's their notary law primer. And for I know for Texas, it gives us all a breakdown of all the notary laws for the entire state. And it actually includes the laws in the back of the book. Uh, so that way we can review them at any time. So if you have any questions, it's always a good idea to have that if you're if it's available for your state. Um, another couple of things that I like to mention are the ID verification guide, which the NNA does have. Um, and then of course you have some general note, uh, general supplies, pens, paper. Um, we need a lot of blue ink pens. And then as far as where to get them, you can go just about anywhere. Uh, be creative with your uh, with where you get your your supplies. You can go to an office depot or office supply store. You can go to Walmart. You can go online. You can go to Amazon. Um, some art stores, art supply stores like Michael's or Joanne's Fabrics. Um, and <clears throat> when you're looking for a stamp, try and find my suggestion. I, I won't say this is the God truth, but my suggestion is to try and find somebody that's a local printer. A lot of times these local printers will not only print your stamp for you, they will print your business cards, they will print any flyers, they'll even make badges sometimes. And I would much rather have to spend an hour going one way uh, to the other side of town to pick up my stamp if it were to be broken uh, or missing or whatever. I'd rather spend that hour trying to get it and have it the same day than wait for Amazon to deliver it three days later. That's just my personal opinion. Please do what's best for you. Uh, but I do suggest trying to find a local print print shop or press shop that will make those for you. If you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Fred Lake uh, does do that. Um, also, independent postal centers for FedEx and UPS. Um, you can also go to FedEx and UPS and create online accounts, and they will deliver those uh, they will deliver those goods to you. Um, in fact, I have you know all these poly envelopes and everything else from both. FedEx and UPS, I just created an account online, have them send it to me 50, 50 envelopes at a time. I don't really use a whole lot, but as I go through them, they, they'll send them to me. Again, here we go. Which device or tool should I buy? Some of the, some of the things that I like to mention when you are looking for, uh, for a specific tool or device, one, is it compliant with your state law? Um, I know here in Texas, we are allowed to use a digital uh, logbook or electronic logbook. Um, so that's something that we can do. I don't know if every state will allow that. So just be sure that whatever device or tool you're trying to use, be sure it's compliant, uh, that you can use it within your state. And then of course, when you're picking something, is it comfortable and easy for you to use? If it's some big, uh, some big deal for you to get around and it's just not comfortable, there's no way you're going to use it. You'll buy it. You'll waste the money basically buying something that you get uncomfortable with and then you never use it. Get something that's comfortable for you. Always be sure it's within your budget. Your budget can increase as, as time goes by as you build your business, but be sure it's something that's um, sustainable for your current budget. And then, of course, um, can you get the consumables for it? I know for printers, everyone's always, uh, everyone's having a hard time finding printers now uh, because of course COVID shoved everyone into their homes and now everyone's working from home, doing school from home and everything else from home. 
So all the printers, uh, all the printers and scanners and everything else that we that we need as notaries are now being sucked up by everybody. So um, not only that, but the replacement parts for it, the replacement ink, the drums, toners, all of that stuff is also being uh, bought left and right. And so it's leaving us with fewer and fewer options. So be sure that whatever you have, you can also access the consumables for that. Otherwise, again, you're just going to have some big thing sitting there. Um, and you're, if you're unable to use it, then it was kind of a waste, a waste of maybe money or time for you. Um, so an important thing on printers, you want to try and go for laser jet. Um, there is, uh, there's a difference between laser jet and inkjet. Uh, inkjet just really applies ink to the top of the uh, to the top of the um, paper and just kind of glues it in place, whereas uh, laser jet actually burns the image into the paper um, so that it becomes part of the paper fibers. So that's why it's recommended that you get laser jet with inkjet. If it gets wet, it can blur and smudge. With uh, laser jet, the paper is going to get wet, but the image won't change. Um, so that's why it's that's why those are recommended. Of course, you want a printer that had, that can handle legal and letter size. I've heard of people using a printer with only one tray and they figure out how to work it and ninja their way to a better business. And I'm all for it. If you can do it, I was lucky enough to get in early. And so I was able to get a dual tray printer and have not had any of those issues yet. Um, but you do want a, a dual tray printer. If you can get a dual tray printer, get one that can print in both legal and letter size, which I've listed here. Um, and then, of course, any of your electronic devices, how portable are they? How, you know, is your laptop really too big or wonky? Can you carry it with you? Is there a bag you can put it in, um, in your tablet? Um, I've heard of people actually taking their scanners to go scan at the table when they're doing a signing. So as they're signing everything, they, they put it in the scanner and scan it right away. So that way, at the end of the signing, they just send it out. So. Um, and then, of course, security, how secure it. How well can you secure all of the devices and everything else that you have? Again, as notaries, whatever is in our possession as a notary, whatever we're using for, as, uh, for our notary business, it's under our security. We're supposed to keep that under lock and key. No one else should have access to that information. Um, so just uh, consider that when you're putting everything together. All right, and that's the end of the course. Does anyone have any additional questions? I am not seeing anything in the chat, uh, but the floor is open, you guys. Um, so I just wanted to ask Sebastian, could you please, if, if you can, uh, maybe share with us whether it's posting it or on the, um, I mean, I don't know how you want, or, or you can do it, the, the jurat, the acknowledgement, and the affidavit. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll talk to Monica about that, and then uh, I'll talk to Monica about the slides as well. So at the end of these slides, there is a list of resources here um, that I I like to give to everybody. Um, these are just some things that have helped me, uh, and I hope really they help you. Um, no, of course, Notary Nerd University. I love Monica and everything she's doing, which is why I, I wanted to put this out here to help everyone else and to help her. Um, and then, you know, the NNA, AAN, um, Notary Gadget is great for accounting and Notary Assist. There's actually another one called Notary Earth that I'm trying out. Um, that one, I like that one so far. Um, that, but again, there's just a few different resources for you guys. And so I will talk to Monica to see where she can put that so that way everyone has access. Thank you, Sebastian. You're welcome. Any other questions? No? Um, yeah, hi. Hi there, thanks so much as well for doing this. You're welcome. Um, I recently received my, my certificate and um, I think for me, I'm just so nervous about actually going ahead and, and doing you know, notarizing work because I just feel like I don't have a clue where I should be signing and whether the document that they're showing me is legal or, you know, how do you know what is a real, you know, a real driving license, a real passport, a real whatever, you know, it may be. How do you know it's a real one? Is there so, something I can learn though? 
So that's definitely something that you can learn um, as you go through, but that's another reason why I included these resources. Um, down here at the very bottom where it says NNA, the ID book, that's one that actually goes over all the different states uh, in the US. And I believe, I wanna say states in the US and some, and some things from Canada about the different IDs that are available and they update that every year. So um, uh, every time they every time a state has an update, they're they're going to include it in the book for the next year. So that's a really great resource, and I think that's only like twenty or thirty dollars. Um, they also have another book that actually does international um, uh, identifications and passports and whatnot that you can get. Um, there there's just no one there's no way for anyone to know absolutely everything about every different ID out there, unless you just do the research. And being right. that. It, change at any time every year there may be a new update it unless it's something you're constantly doing i don't think that's something that you that you can really always have but there are resources available to get that information if it's a question you have thank you you're so welcome. would you say just just do it how did you start yourself how did you push yourself to get going i just did it scared i okay. to, be, to be honest i i got my first signing it and I was completely out of my mind in my head, um, but I never let the person who I, who I was doing the signing for, they never saw that on my face. I just believed in, in the confidence that I had. I believed that I, I just trusted that I had studied enough. And I also knew that if I make a mistake, I own it right then and there, and I try and fix it as quickly as possible. Um, so, you know, if I came across a document, oh, hey, hold on just a moment. I haven't seen this before. Let me read through it really quickly. Du -du 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 -du. Okay, it looks like this document just says this. If you'll sign and date here, we should be good. And of course, leave it to them. If they want to read it, they can read it. But you just have to believe in yourself and have that confidence. And eventually you'll get there. It, 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 you just have to take the leap. Thank you. You're welcome. Just to um, piggyback off of what Sebastian was saying, uh, is it Cola, Cola? Am I pronouncing Kula. it right? Yeah, you're close, Kula. Okay, Kula. Um, just to piggyback off of what he was saying, as far as most of the time in your state, you're going to get your state ID. So you'll know that particular ID. However, there is a good training with NNA um, on a, I think he might be or may have been an FBI agent or something. They gave a really good training on how to detect fake IDs. So you might want to pull that up. It is on YouTube free. Thank you. Thank you. All right. If there aren't any other questions, uh, Tammy, you can have the floor back. And then of course, I, I will uh, again speak to uh, Monica on how she wants to get the everything released for everybody. Um, so we'll probably share it. I'll, I'll share the information. Once I get that uh, finalized with her, I'll share it on uh, Facebook as to how that will be, uh, how we'll do that. Thank you for your time, Sebastian. You're welcome. Um, the only other thing I think I would wanna um, just kind of again, piggyback off of you, Sebastian, uh, the best thing to do is just get started. The best thing you can do is answer your phone when a customer calls. That's that's step number one. Yes. Answer the phone. And as long as they're asking for a reasonable request of a service that you have advertised and offered, then you say yes. Scared yeah. and all. Okay. Yeah. Then you call your support system. You post on the, on the your support system uh, Facebook website and we'll help you walk through it. And you just breathe and you don't do anything that you know will not um, be acceptable to you. You don't do anything that will cause you to not sleep at night. You don't do anything that will cause you to have to look over your shoulder because that's just not who you are, okay? Yeah. And, so, and you say no if you are requested to do something that will cause you to do something like that. Otherwise, as long as you go through your steps, you check ID, you open your book, if you, um, your journal is, is highly re, re, um, recommended that you have a journal for your own protection, whether it's the state requirement or not, you take- um, In both ways, like you gotta hold up, let me- You take fingerprints if, if you can for your state, you take your thumbprint, 
and you do your notarization if everything is in order and you just breathe all along the way and that is and i'm telling you you'll be okay very good info I'm glad you, you guys actually said that, that you went, Sebastian, you, you went at it scared because I think that you can't always be completely ready. Sometimes you have to, you know, go ahead and give it up and you'll, you'll get used to it as you go along because I've done five and I went in there scared. Like, you know, am, am I going to mess up? Am I going to, and it actually, you know, if you, if you take a breath, Take a moment and look for your initial lines and your, you know, those little things. Um, do you'll be okay? Yeah, sometimes the best teacher is experience, and unfortunately, experience. Yeah. There's there's no way to to get around hands it. Hands on, okay, right? Do it. <laughs> so, hands on. Yeah, hands on is um, generally one of the best teachers. At least for me, it is so. At a certain point, I, I either figured one of two things is going to happen. Either I'm going to do this, whether I'm scared or not, or I'm going to go find a job. I didn't want to find a job. So <laughs> is that, yeah, Tammy, it's, it's funny. I was just, I, cause I had that moment of, if I don't do it, I'm never going to do it. So jump out the window now and get it done. And you know, you are a little nervous, but if you take it, if, if you take control of the, the signing, um, and I, and I have to tell everyone that I, it, it, it may not be for everyone, but the night before I started using little flags, sticky notes everywhere. Yep. And I said, this is what I'm going to do until I get comfortable with every type of loan document. Yep. Um, Whatever but it's funny. It, it's, it's funny because you walk in there, you walk in there dressed in your business outfit and and the little tags and they look at you like whoa okay so they they know what they're doing here yeah you know so it it, it definitely helps Hi. my first signing took me two hours and i was scared through the entire thing now i can get them done in about an hour so but i've i've done it enough times that i know what the documents are so i i can just say hey this is uh, you know, this is just a requirement that they want you to have homeowners insurance signed date here. It's it, it's something simple and easy. I'm not trying to explain the document. It's just this is what this is the basic overview sign and date. And even if you just go, hey, I just need you to sign date here. That works too. So, having the having the opportunity to prepare the docs and like you have all the little flags and everything to make sure you don't miss anything is great. Sometimes that doesn't always work out, especially when your appointment was at three o'clock, but they didn't get docs to you until five o'clock. So now you're trying to figure out that whole situation or your appointment is, you know, your appointment is at um, four o'clock. They didn't get docs to you till three o'clock, but it's a 45 minute drive or 20 minute drive or whatever, or there's traffic or, you know, all of those things come into play as well. Um, so uh, at a certain point, you, you're just, once you do it enough, you'll you'll know the documents. It'll be really easy. So. All right, D, um, you are uh, up for the next question. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you guys for doing this. This is absolutely wonderful. I'm very new in um, the notary signing, and um, I haven't gotten the notary signing yet. Every time notary go sends me something. It's gone in like two minutes. And I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like, how, is there any suggestions on how to um, get a signing? Keep or, responding. I'm sorry? Keep responding. Oh. Even if they've already taken it, just, re just respond. Um, so the company, the companies like this, they already have a bunch of notaries that they usually send it out to. And when they send out this notification, it's kind of a cattle call. So you and probably 10 other notaries or five other notaries are getting that same information at the same time. The thing that everyone, I guess, doesn't think about is that the point from when the company hits enter to send out that notification, then it goes through the satellites and everything else is bounces around before it gets to your phone and through your service that time may be different from uh, when they send it to when your neighbor sends it. If you've ever been in a room and gotten an Amber Alert and then half the room gets the Amber Alert and then like 30 seconds later, the other half gets it, that's kind of the effect that you're, that you're dealing with. 
everybody everybody has a different network everybody has different devices and whatnot that information gets to them at different times um, so it's, there's no guarantee that you'll be able to get that work but the only thing i can suggest is really just keep responding and also sign up with more companies okay yes i i did that i signed up with a few of them but I'm, um what is the would you suggest some of the noter of the signing companies said they have you to do tests or something? Is that recommended or more certificates? Um, it's really up to you. Um, you can't you can do it if you want to. If that's something you're willing to, to do and you have the money for, or you you're willing to put in for the budget, then yeah. Um, it, it, it really is just a personal choice. If they, if they, if this is what they require and you're willing to meet that, then by all means, go ahead and meet that so that way you can sign up. Uh, but there are plenty of services out there and plenty of clients out there that you shouldn't have to worry about getting more uh, certifications. One certification I would recommend if you haven't already gotten it is the NNA certification. And if you generally, if you get that, the, the cheapest tier with them to, for the background, and if they have the certification test with it, that that should cover just about everybody out there. Yes, I have that one, the NNA. Yeah, yes. then you should be fine with that. If there is a company that's uh, asking for more or asking for a specific, um, for a specific type of training, then it's really down to a personal choice. Do you want to go through with that training or not? Are you willing to spend the money on that training or not uh, in order to, to basically gain that business? If you are, by all means, great, go for it. If not, then, you know, maybe it's something you revisit later or maybe just don't talk to them ever again. But <laughs> this is okay. your business. So um, just remember, we're no longer, as notaries that are trying to build a business, we're no longer employees. We're not okay. waiting for somebody to give us a paycheck. We are now Steve Jobs. We are the ones creating our system. We're creating our masterpiece. So we get to make all those, the, the, those decisions as to whether we want to work with this company or not, whether we want to take that, take that uh, opportunity or not. So that affects everything else underneath you, but you're no longer just waiting for that paycheck. You're the CEO, you're the boss, you're the owner. You have to make those decisions for your business. Okay, yes, this, this is deep, but I'm ready, I'm ready. Um, one other thing, can you um, speak on the, um, I've gotten some Texas cash notary, but I think you have to be in a um, attorney's office or something on that. Is that correct? Yes. So for a cash out in Texas, um, it is required that you either be in an attorney's office, in a title office, or you can be in the lender's office or one of their branches. So if the uh, lender is, let's say, Chase Bank and their, and their bank whatever the thing is, is coming from like New England or whatever. If you can find a Chase Bank local to you that has, that's a separate branch, that will work. If you were in New England, of course, you could go to that branch, but it either has to be in an attorney's office, a title office, or the, the lender's office or one of their branches. It's something that was written into law a long time ago. I don't know if it's ever been clarified as to why that was written into law. Uh, but it is, but it is part of the uh, state laws for Texas. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I will say this, guys, just to again piggyback off of the great information that Sebastian is um, providing this evening. You are embarking on this new business venture, but um, don't take it lightly. I think I think before you, before any of us get into becoming a notary, we don't fully understand or grasp the importance of what a notary does. We are a, please understand, we are a very, very small part of the whole legal process, but we are a highly, highly important part, okay? So with that, I know a lot of people end up coming to this field off of the current, um, you know, make six figures and all of that, and all of that is very possible, but Understanding how to be a good notary is first and foremost, understanding your state laws, your parameters, what you can and can't do, the difference between an acknowledgement and a direct, doing your notarial acts and your ceremonies appropriately, properly notating everything just in case you get called on the carpet. Yes, and most importantly, understanding that even outside of 
loan signings, notary, this business model is the gift that keeps on giving. If you are willing, if you are the studious type and willing to pay money that you can deduct on your business taxes and get back, you know, get a portion of it back to constantly get the training that you need and look into immigration, adoption, apostille, um, divorce. Right now, divorce attorneys are having their heyday because of COVID and people are realizing they only got one life to live and they're, gonna not, they're not gonna live with this person anymore. So, you know, and so they got situations where they don't want the people in the same building or the people don't wanna be in the same room with each other. If you're willing to go to each one that's a business model, like a notary courier service. So it's not just loan signings. Loan signings is a small part of a big, uh, big piece of the pie. Understanding that about the notary is what is going to make you be recession proof, in my opinion. If you can get your fundamentals down of being a notary, just being a notary in general, everything else just compiles on, it piles up on top of that. Every, the being a notary is the is the minimum bar. So if you can be a fantastic notary, everything else should be relatively easy as long as you can get your process down for that, whatever that business is, whether it be loan signings or like she said, for divorce uh, divorce attorneys or uh, hospitals or, or whatever, whatever you decide to go through. Um, then if you can get these notary fundamentals down, it helps a lot tremendously because that's the basis of everything else we do. Yes, Jeanette, there are many venues to explore. All right, well, that, um, that is it for me. Uh, thank you guys for coming. I uh, appreciate you tuning in. I'm actually surprised we had so many more participants than I actually expected, so um, that's good to know. Um, if you have any suggestions or any questions uh, uh, about this particular um, class, please let us know. Uh, we'll try and incorporate what we can. Again, I'm going to make a few different, a few minor changes to this, so that way we can uh, be sure we, everyone gets more information. Um, and uh, you guys have a great day. Enjoy your Saturday. Pula, a wedding efficient, that is a possibility. You just need to check your state laws. I know Florida has that. Um, and there are some other states where that's pretty um, um, well out there for notaries to be a uh, wedding efficient. Yeah. But I um, I personally looked into it a little bit, but I decided that just wasn't the route for me at this time. I'm I'm focusing on uh, Ron right now, um, and and that's one thing that I I noticed um, with us as notaries, we do have a lot of different avenues of business that we can take. Um, and one thing that I've noticed is that we get overwhelmed really easily because there is so much information flying around. Um, so find something that really, um, uh, that you really like, uh, and test it out, review it, figure it out if it's going to be for you, give it some time and, you know, figure out if that's the route you want to take before you move on to the next thing. Because I figured, uh, after a certain point, when I was trying to spin five different notary plates, I figured I can't keep spinning these plates and, and trying to do this and this and this. Um, so I decided to focus down on loan signings and Ron. Um, and that's that's been a good choice for me and my personal business. Um, but yeah, focus on what you really want to do because there, there, there are so many avenues and, and it can get overwhelming with all the information that's available. All right, guys, Monica will have this uh, recording up in the library within the next 24 hours. All right, well, that's it for me. You guys have a great night. Thank you, Tammy. All right, thank you.